It's Tuesday, June 7, 2011, and today we're going to be taking a hopefully quick look at Magia Linux version 1. Back in September of 2010, the Mandriva Linux project laid off a bunch of developers, and rather than just taking their ball and going home, metaphorically speaking, they decided to continue working on Mandriva, sort of. They created a not-for-profit organization, they spawned off a fork of their own and called it Magia, and as of just a few weeks ago, they released their first official version, again, Magia Linux version 1. Now from reading over their site, Magia is intended for universal usage, they intend it for end user, desktop type usage, office and workspace usage, software developers, and even server uses. They provide, for the most part, the latest and greatest in terms of software. They've got the latest versions of KDE, XFCE, LXDE, all of them except for GNOME. They're using the GNOME 2.32 release, so it's kind of odd to see that they haven't moved forward in terms of that one, but perhaps in the near future. If you're not familiar with Mandriva, the one that Magia is based off of, it uses the RPM package management system, much like Fedora and PC Linux OS and a bunch of other distributions. However, the software installation method is not using YUM or whatever any of the others use. They use a package manager called URPMI. And the other thing that really makes Magia and by extension Mandriva special is the DrakeConf tools. The DrakeConf tools are a suite of utilities that were created back before Mandriva was Mandriva when it was called Mandrake, and they run the gamut as far as system configuration is concerned from network configuration, software installation, 3D graphics management, and a bunch of other things. I do remember a very long time ago, the last time I actually used Mandrake when it was called Mandrake, I used the Configuration Center a lot, and it was very, very helpful in terms of having one place you could go to to configure your users and your network and your audio settings and everything one very easy to use control center. Now in terms of what software this comes pre-installed with, it has the traditional suite of KDE based tools if you're using the KDE version. I haven't had a chance to check out the GNOME version yet, but I would assume that it does come with a lot of GNOME based utilities. I did notice it comes pre-installed with Caden Live version 0.8, which is of course the latest and greatest version available. But it also comes with GIMP and GwenView and a couple of other G-based, GNOME-based utilities. So it's nice that they have sort of bridged the gap and started using tools from both sides because you, you can't really be purist nowadays. You can't have just one or just the other. Now, like the title implies, this is just a first look, just a little bit of background information on Magia. The little bit of time that I have spent with it, I had a little bit of trouble with the installer in terms of the virtual machine. It didn't want to work with the keyboard the first time through. A quick reinstallation, quick meaning 15 to 20 minutes time, and I was very easily able to get into KDE and work through everything. It actually came with the virtual box editions pre-installed, which was very, very nice and helpful for a person like myself. In terms of performance, I, like I said, I can't say a whole lot about it. I did run it live on a machine at work for a little while and it's KDE based and KDE traditionally is decently heavy so it ran acceptably well. It took a little while to start up. I'm used to running systems like Arch Linux and Ubuntu and Fedora which do have decently fast startup times so this one was a little bit slower but really not that bad especially considering I was booting it live. Booting it in the virtual machine it takes a little bit longer than some of the other distros I've tried but really not that bad and launching applications, running applications, uh, installing new applications did not take that long at all. And that actually does lead to one thing I kind of forgot to mention earlier. There are three main sets of repositories for this. You've got the free repositories, which only contain free and open source software, the non-free repositories, which of course contain non-free software, but that one only contains software that is available to be distributed completely for free anywhere in the world. And then there's the tainted repository, which is just a fun name to say. And basically those are supposed to be free, but aren't necessarily. Things like audio video codecs, maybe DVD decryption software, things that are not necessarily considered 100% safe and legal wherever you happen to be. So that repository is not enabled by default, but it is available for you to use. Also, if you have a graphics card that does require proprietary drivers, they do have the latest and greatest drivers for NVIDIA and ATI available. And from their site, they say that the Intel Sandy Bridge graphics drivers do work very well as well. That's more of a kernel thing than anything though. But I think that's about all I have to say as far as the first impressions of Magia. It really wasn't terribly difficult to install. The Drake Conf utilities are very, very nice to have. If you haven't taken a look at any of them before, definitely download Magia and give it a look from one of their live CDs that are available. But let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Have you used Magia yet? If you have not, would you be interested in trying it out? As always, though, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.